as you'll recall, the three health insurance companies who are doing business in the healthcare marketplace, individual healthcare marketplace here in Montana filed their rates um, about a month or so ago with my office. Uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield of Montana, which is with HCS out of Illinois, uh, requested an average rate change of 62%. Montana Health Co-op was 22%, and Pacific Source out of Oregon was about 19.8%. We actually did hold two public hearings. The first one was in Helena on July 26th, and then the second one was in Billings on August 3rd. And uh, all three companies uh, presented their justifications for those um, rate requests And then uh, I had an opportunity to ask them some questions. We had our um, contracted actuary who was here as well, and uh, she asked them questions and has been asking them questions throughout the process after they they made their initial filings and has continued um, to work with us um, to continue to work through those rate filings even um, before and since the rate hearings. And we're very close to... um, announcing the final uh, um, rate increase request by the companies. Okay, now, now what what goes into that decision? I won't ask you to, you know, to give us a preview. Uh, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag. But what goes into that decision when you sit down with your actuary and your staff and you look over all the notes? And, and I realize when, you're, when you start talking with insurance people, sometimes your eyes begin to cross <laughs> And you have, you know, well, the party of the first part and the uh, actuary of the second part. And oh, after you a- are so right. You are so right. They're <laughs> masters at kind of like, um, you know, painting a picture. I'll just say that in a very nice way. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> and, you know, presenting the numbers and the justifications um, in, in their way. Uh, ra- and, ra- rather than perhaps as I would do it, you walk in with a ukulele and you say, "We need the money. We need the money." <laughs> That's how I would do it. I oh mean, <laughs> my gosh! Yes. Well, here's the thing. I mean, you know, we were very fortunate to have the legislature give this office finally that ability to review those rate filings because, as as you know, up until about three years ago, we didn't even get to see the rate filing. They just did it. <laughs> right, right, right. Um, but in the end, we're going we, we're going through these, you know, piece by piece by piece and looking at them and saying, okay, we, we see issues here or we think there might be some problems there. And when we do that, we actually then um, tell them, we think that you should decrease your amount by this much. Or, unfortunately, in some cases, we may have to say, you know what, you're too low, which means you may be financially insolvent and unable to make, um, pay any claim or pay the claims. And so we may actually ask them to increase in certain certain cases, which is rare. Wow. But, because, uh, yeah, you want to make sure, that's the whole point, is making sure that the company is financially solvent and can make those um, payments on those claims when the time comes. Well, yeah, because if the if the company is insolvent, they're going to go out of business, and that uh, that hurts everybody. That's exactly right. And so, you know, we have, as you can imagine, in particular with the Blue Cross Blue Shield rate filing, because it was so high um, and so far, um, there was such a difference between the other two companies. We have really um, worked hard with that company to say, listen, um, here are the things that we see. And frankly, you know, we've told them, that we think that they could lower their um, rate filing increase by as much as 20%. Okay. And uh, as I said, we make those recommendations, but in the end, they get to decide if they're going to take the recommendations or not. So we um, got the final filings from the companies on Friday. Um, We're working through that today, and we will be uh, making a public announcement either tomorrow or Wednesday um, well, we'll be sending those to CMS in, at the federal government, and hopefully we'll be able to make a final um, public announcement about those uh, final rates here in the next week or so. Fantastic. Uh, can we take a couple of calls here real quick? Okay, let's let's get uh, John on the line. John, you're on with Monica Lindine. Hi. Hi, Monica. Yeah, here's what Obamacare has done for my wife and I. We're in our 50s. 
uh, before Obamacare, we were playing Blue Cross Blue Shield. Our last premium was four sixty-five a month with a one thousand dollar deductible. First year of Obamacare, it went to eight twenty with a six thousand dollar deductible. This year, we're paying twelve hundred five dollars a month, and with this new increase, we're going to be paying nineteen hundred and fifty-two dollars a month. If if it goes up sixty-two percent, right? Yeah. Well, if it goes up forty, we'll still be paying like seventeen hundred, and that's like 40% of our income, net income. Sure. Well, yeah. John, I'm, I'm going to let her answer that, okay? okay? Thanks for the call. So, Yeah, yeah, John, I, I, I really believe me, I feel for you, because unfortunately it is the, the folks who are in that kind of gap in the 50s before they're eligible, you know, for that, for that golden, when they reach, before they reach that golden age and actually can take advantage of Medicare, uh, they're the folks who seem to be getting hurt the most. With these increases, um, so in, in for, and unfortunately, too many times it's those folks who don't, also don't qualify for the tax credits that could help right, exactly. make sure that right. And the one thing I would say is it's really important for people to remember. Um, certainly, it's the folks that are in the fifties that seem to age fifty group that seem to be getting hurt the most. But really, remember these two things. Number one. If you are already taking advantage of the tax credit to offset cost, um, you're 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 still going to be able to do that, and probably won't see a huge, if any, increase at all. Um, if you haven't been purchasing your um, individual health insurance through the marketplace to try to take advantage of the tax credit to offset the cost, you should look at doing that. Right now, let and me then, let, let me ask you this real quick. Do yeah. Do you think that the federal government will look on what's happening here in Montana and other states and say, okay, okay, I understand the, the insurance companies had to bid low to get the contract. I understand there are other kind of makeup. But will the federal government say, okay, it doesn't matter how much more they, they charge, we are going to, com- uh, to provide a subsidy that is commensurate with that increase. Have you received that, uh, that sense at all from oh, the federal they, government? They do do, they, yes, they do get that. They do get that subsidy. I mean, they, yeah, I, they are I know, going to get that subsidy. What, I, what I'm saying is, are they going to increase the subsidy by an amount that would make it affordable for people? Yes. They will. That's not the problem. Okay. That's going to happen. What, what the problem is... It's the people who don't qualify. It's the people who don't qualify or the people who are purchasing off of the marketplace because they don't want to take it because they don't because they have kind of a philosophical disagreement with the law sure. and could be applying for those tax credits. So right. I'm really encouraging people to take a look at it for their financial benefit. Certainly there are going to be some folks, unfortunately, who are still going to have the issues, as I said. And, se- and finally, um, let's remember that <laughs> the reasons, some of the reasons why the, 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 the rate increases are going up still in such a substantial amount, and um, why we're why we're being forced to pay these rates? I mean, number one, the cost of care is continuing to go up. Um, the Affordable Care Act does not address the cost of care, and number two, unfortunately, we have this political football that's being played and has been being played with the Affordable Care Act in Congress, and there were certain. Um, payments that were supposed to go to the insurance industry to help them kind of through this transition period because everybody knew there would be a, you know, because of pent-up demand, there would be an increase in the folks amount of folks actually getting care, and that will level off. But um, because of the political football that's being paid and some of the payments being cut, um, insurance companies aren't getting that money that they were supposed to get, and as a result, we're paying the cost. Okay, okay. let's get one more call in. I know you have to go here real quick. So, Pete, uh, real quickly, what's your question? Yeah, it's uh, the Affordable Care Act has turned into being unaffordable. The question I have are people like at Monica's position making copious notes and having oopspa to communicate to their legislators as to what the faulty design is in that act. It's causing a lot of these problems, providing coverage to those of us out in the field here so that they start aggressively addressing the template that's caused the problems okay. rather than just the providers. All right, let's, let's go ahead and ask you that. So uh, are, how, how can you help our legislators 
uh, our congressional delegation with some advice from your perspective as insurance commissioner. <laughs> well, it kind of goes back to what I was just talking about. Um, you know, this past year I served as the president of the National Association of Insurance Company, or Insurance Commissioners, my goodness. Um, and that organization, we fought really hard when the Affordable Care Act was being debated to make sure that we were able to maintain state regulatory authority. Um, we did a pretty darn good job, but still there are some things that we have to deal with at the federal level. And as I said, um, you know, I testified in front of Congress um, twice last year about some of the things that they could do to fix this piece of legislation. We need Congress to quit playing politics with this because it's hurting all of us. Um, they've got to um, realize that because they play politics, it makes it difficult for the companies, which then we have to end up paying for. So they just they, they've got to move past it.